What's up guys, it's me Deshaun and welcome back to our Fire Force chapter review. Unfortunately, this will be our last Fire Force chapter review and I'm very sad and excited about this at the same time. I know I'm kind of late when it comes to talking about the ending of Fire Force, so I don't want to hold this back any further. So let's dive right in to the ending of Fire Force. So from the moment Shinra became God, he created another God, or in this case, should I say Shinigami, out of thin air with his amazing new powers from his new form, Shinra Bon Showman. But it turns out Shinigami actually wants to take Shinra's life. Just as everything was seemingly resolved, a supernatural being appears. But what is it? Shinigami then tells Shinra that it's time for him to die. After recently getting brought back to life, both Charon and Inka are caught off guard by Shinigami saying this. Sho, confused just like how I was when I first read this, says, Brother, what's going on? Shinra then proclaims, it's the arrival of a being that this world needs. And that thing just so happened to be God. Sho, shocked by this, asks, that horrifying looking thing? Shinra then says, isn't the idea of people making up and worshipping a god they can't even see sort of crazy? So I manifested one, an absolute being, a god to rule death. And this same god that we are currently seeing is Lord Death from Soul Eater. My lord, we're all ready. A fine attitude. Now die. At this moment, it seems like the same Shinigami that Shinra created is now killing everyone as we see all of their souls float out of their bodies. Shinra stands there, saying, I don't need it anymore. And the soul resonance between Shinra, Sho, and his mom comes to an end. You all possess a power, far too great for mankind. I'll be confiscating it. Sho then says, our powers, and you took seven of them. But there are only five pillars here. I've already claimed them from those missing. So Shinigami took the souls of Sho, Shinra, Inka, Haumea, Sumire, Amaterasu, and Haumea. This part confuses me a bit actually though. He says, I would have liked to take all eight however. It seems like the last one is somewhere outside of this world. When I first read this, I always thought Death was talking or referring to Arthur. But then I realized Arthur is not a pillar. There are eight pillars. But the funny thing is, the 8th pillar is Nataku, and we see him clearly get Nataku's soul afterwards. And, obviously Nataku is on Earth. So what in the world is Shinigami talking about? I would have liked to take all 8, however it seems the last one is somewhere outside of this world. Arthur's outside of the world, but he's not a pillar. Was Nataku a false pillar and is Arthur actually a pillar? I don't know. What is this man alluding to? Because Nataku is the pillar of fear. And, you know, we see fear playing a big part in Soul Eater. So maybe he didn't confiscate that power and it was running rampant in another world. I honestly couldn't tell you. It's kind of confusing to me. But if you guys have an answer to what death is alluding to or what you think this is, please let me know in the comment section below. Who knows, it might be a mistranslation, but I wouldn't want to say that because I really do trust our scanlation team. But hey, sometimes it happens. Benny Maru and Nataku then realize that their souls have been pulled out of their bodies. It seems like everyone has lost all of their powers. Haumea then plucks Inka in the head. It seems like she's not able to use her precognitive abilities anymore. And it seems like Haumea no longer hears the thoughts of all of mankind. It seems like spontaneous human combustion has disappeared from the world entirely. Then Death suddenly says, Well then, I think I'll be disappearing from this world. Thank you for everything. Sho asks, Disappearing, but where to? Somewhere a god belongs, I suppose. I'll make a place like that, and then I'll go there. If you need me, just give me a call. 4242564. And this is also the same phone number that Shinigami used in Soul Eater. After saying this, Shinigami then disappears. So long. Sho Confused says, It was certainly as you said, brother, a supreme god. Though he seems quite casual. 
Shinra then nervously responds, More fun that way, right? You don't have a problem with it, do you? And this would be because Shinra wanted to make a world that everyone would be pleased with. Shinra's mom then shows up and Sho is concerned over her appearance. She then responds, not very motherly looking, is it? But the world is different now. Why get hung up on appearances? You know, considering now this is a world where cats can use magic and people can turn into weapons, why get hung up at all? You know, when you look at Shinra's mom, she, she kind of sexy in a weird way. Nah, nah, I'm playing, but to get back to the manga, <laughs> Inka and Iris both approach Shinra's mom. And Inka introduces the both of them as Shinra's girlfriends. Plural. So I guess that means that Shinra has a polyamorous relationship with both Inka and Iris. Disgusting. Anime caters to the male fantasies. What do you expect? We got a character like Tamaki in this manga. I'm honestly surprised that Twitter didn't have a field day with this. <laughs> Let me not give them any ideas. But it's a good thing, rather than being a harem pro tag, Shinra is a respectable young man, a hero, and certainly not a devil. And just like a hero, he responds in such a modest manner. What? What are you talking about? Shinra? Both of them? No, it's not like that, Mom! It's not like that with either of them! Really? They both seem like lovely girls. Inka then jumps in and says, It's okay, Miss Kusakabe. Shinra's the hero who saved the world. He deserves two girlfriends. Three even. I don't even care if I'm not first. Oh my god. Inka then says, Shinra-san, do you feel that way too? And he hits the meanest smile. What a savage. Yeah, that's my main character, boy. Yeah, what y'all know about that? Y'all know about that shit, we guess, man. And immediately after smiling over the thought of having two biddies, he yeets the both of them. His mom responds, you're smiling. And then he says, no mom, I'm, this is, yep, my face is definitely freezing up. And after this moment, Shinra then decides to go back to the 8th. And he's excited to introduce his family to them. This is a new world, one that's found hope. And in these next few panels, we begin to see the world of Soul Eater. I used Vulcan and Lixon smarts to build this world. There's probably going to be all sorts of differences from the old one. And we begin to see just how vast the wildlife are on this new world. And it's all thanks to you protecting it. A place that I could come back to. As he looks up into the sky and sees his longtime friend, Arthur. I got back first, now it's your turn to come home, my friend. Shinra then meets up with the 8th. Special Fire Force Company 8, 2nd Class Fire Soldier, Shinra Kusakabe, returning from the fire scene. I've extinguished the flames consuming the world, and the human race is now safe from combustion. Everyone from the 8th then has a warm get-together. Sho looks up to his guardian arrow and they begin to smile. I'm not sure when it was that my face stopped tensing up, and I started to smile like normal again. Actually, I do know. It was the moment that the boy who was called the devil found hope. The day I joined the 8th. And the manga ends off with us seeing Shinra's home, the 8th. But luckily, there's an epilogue. In this chapter, the first thing that we are met with is the world of Soul Eater, and we are following from the perspectives of both Juggernaut and Tamaki. It's hard to believe there are towns like this other than Tokyo now. Death City from Soul Eater would be a good example of this, because that is actually located in Nevada, while the current location that they're in would be Tokyo. Is this the same Toyokyo from Biichi? Who knows, and there's no concrete answer on whether or not it is. But so far, unfortunately, it seems like it's not. Before the Cataclysm, the world was a much bigger place. It's so peaceful without human combustion. It doesn't seem real. And it actually turns out that Juggernaut and Tamaki are actually on a date. And during this date, Tamaki is not complaining, and she brings up how the Fire Force actually disbanded. And Juggernaut brings up that they may be on an expedition or something. 
And it turns out that with the creation of this new world, that despite the fact that everyone has lost their pyrokinesis, and you'd think they'd be a lot weaker, it actually turns out that everybody got a whole lot stronger. Even stronger than what they were before. It's the people with powerful souls who are stronger now. Basically meaning those who have had hysterical fire or anything along those lines are now strong. And the first person that we see is Captain Obi, who is now the commander of the world's hero force. He's so strong, he could rip up the earth with one hand. And then you have people who are like Benny Maru, who've made a planetary Nichiren, and now he's a lot stronger than ever before. Thinking about that is just absolutely insane. And when we look at the current members of the hero force, we see Licked, Vulcan and Hinawa and right now it seems like they're playing Monster Hunter. I've located the position of the giant monster that appeared. A massive serpent 100 meters in length just like the other day. What a world Shinra has created. Obi, Benumaru, Kanro and the rest of the hero force are all searching for Shinra. Then we get a quick look at what exactly happened to Reika. Reika and Kareem reunite and it seems as if Reika is leaving to go on some training himself, to go see the world, and travel down the road of valor. We then get a look at Chrono and Nataku, and it seems like they're just roaming the streets, I guess. No real explanation on what they plan on doing, but I guess it's whatever. And now we're getting a look at Iris and Hibana. It seems as if they're sitting around and talking in a bar. Is this bar Atsushia? Who knows? Hibana then begins to say, I know you two are close, but... I'm happy that my idol is a hit with so many ladies. He's the hero who revives the world. It's only natural he'd be popular. Iris is shocked by this. But I thought that you liked Shinra. Hibana then responds, He's my idol. A true fan will let their idol get away with anything. Sounds like a simp to me. And it seems like Iris agrees. Don't you think that's a bit twisted? He's a hero to everyone now. So it's not like I can keep him to myself. And I know there's more to life than love. Hibana responds, and that it's stupid to get worked up over romance. But Shinra is another story. She says, hey, he just went off chasing after her again. And I wonder when he's coming back. Trying to keep herself from getting worked up over Shinra chasing Inka. We then cut to Shinra and Ogun. Can you believe it's over 100 meters long? Crazy stuff. You really made a hell of a world for us. Fun, right? Where's Arthur and Excalibur? Waiting at the base of the mountain. He said he had a little business to take care of. Should we meet up with him? He might not be coming back this time if we leave it to him. It took so long for him to come back from space. Then in the next panel we see both Arthur and Excalibur looking off into the mountainous region they're currently exploring. And a dragon suddenly appears above them. Arthur looks up at this dragon and smiles. And when I really think about it, Shinra brought everybody back to life, but what exactly did happen to Dragon? Is it a possibility that he could actually be this dragon that suddenly flew up above Arthur? Or is this just some random dragon that suddenly appeared? Whatever it may be, I just thought that was something interesting to throw onto the table. Especially when you take into consideration that Shinra has recently brought everyone back to life. Arthur, are you done? Yeah, just had to give a proper hello. Oh yeah? We face a Hydra next. Don't let yourself get worked up. Worked up? My ass. That thing's a nightmare. Someone might actually die this time. What do you say, Excalibur? I have just seen it. You will die. Death's visage will loom over you until you pass. Man, what the heck? He's just like Arthur. Apparently, the Hydra is actually right over the mountains that they're facing, and it is causing all the smoke. And it seems like that Hinawa and Maki are actually together. Because they'll get upset if Hinawa doesn't come back home. And it turns out there are a bunch of monsters just like this Hydra scattered all over the world. And Shinra claims that there's nothing to worry about. Ogun begins to mess with Shinra, teasing him, says the guy who created all this. And while Shinra and Ogun are goofing around, somebody suddenly appears, a mysterious figure, and it looks like a witch. If it isn't dumb, dumber, and dumbest, you're too slow. You had me worried. 
Who is this witch? This is the first witch that we've ever seen. And it turns out that Inca is the first witch in the world of Soul Eater. And now we finally hit where the sidewalk ends, with Shinra, Ogun, Arthur, and Excalibur all meeting up with Inca. Well, Shinra, change your mind? It was you that summoned that huge serpent, wasn't it? Look, I'm not giving you what you want. Funny how she summoned a giant serpent. Especially when you take into consideration how Medusa was a snake witch, and Inca actually wears her same hood. And now when we look at this altercation between Shinra and Inca, what exactly does she want from Shinra? Why not? Don't be so stingy. It turns out she wants to have his babies. Ogun looks over at Shinra. Ooh la la. I already have Iris. But it turns out Inca really didn't want to swing that way. What? Gross. Don't get the wrong idea. You think I'd want to be with a boring lame like you? Huh? But... I thought you liked me, but it turns out the only thing she wants is his seed. You what? Are you out of your mind? There's no way I'm giving it to you. Why not? If you ask Lick, he could easily get it. Easy peasy. That's not what I'm saying at all. I want the baby of the hero who saved the world. It's not like you can't make any more afterwards. Hand it over, Scrooge. Why are you so hung up on this? You of all people should get it. Now that this is a world of death, the value of life has changed. And well, that's made me want a life that will carry on. Shinra pauses at this response. If you want a world-saving hero, why not take Arthur? Whoa, don't drag me into this. No way, he's an idiot. <laughs> Sucks to be you. You do realize she just dissed you, right? I wanted to die before, but you changed the world and now I found a reason to live. You saved me in every sense of the word. I want to leave behind descendants with a guy like you. Sound good? No, sorry. God, you're so lame. Well then, maybe I'll just continue wrecking the world and being a witch until you say yes. Everyone's having a blast in this world you made Shinra. Thanks, hero. No biggie. Everyone begins to laugh and we start to see the moon from Soul Eater. We get to see some of the other characters from Fire Force as well. With Maki, Liza, Joker, Burns, Sho, Nataku, Korono, Haibachi, Hina and Hika, Haumea, and Charon. My boy Kof is beautiful. And the most important character throughout the entirety of the series, the sun. And suddenly, 25 years begin to pass. And the 8th is still there. But now, we see a fully grown Shinra at the age of 42. Supreme Commander of the World Heroes Force, Kusakabe Shinra. This is personally my favorite moment in this ending. Good morning, Supreme Commander Kusakabe. A congratulatory message from President Obi arrived. He's a busy man. I appreciate it. At long last, your child has been enlisted. Shinra sweats. I guess even heroes worry about things, eh? When it comes to your child, it doesn't matter if you're a hero. As Shinra says this, we see two mysterious characters who begin to walk into the Cathedral of the Eighth. I'm worried because I don't know what to expect, but I'm incredibly excited as well. And it turns out these two mysterious people are both Inca and Arthur. And it seems like Shinra finally gave in to Inca's request, considering she's no longer a witch, but instead a member of the world's hero force, or I guess you could say Shinsengumi. When you live every moment without regrets, with everything you have, death is no big deal. These lives were given. We should enjoy them like big, idiotic fools. It's what lets our souls burn bright. After this very touching moment with what Shinra says about life and the meaning of it, we get a time skip into the long distant future. And it looks like it's taking place around the same time as Soul Eater. We see Shinigami, the same exact Shinigami from Soul Eater. Now then, a god child in the shape of a man. What sort of kid will you be? Oh, I know. I'll make him in the image of the boy who saved this world. 
Hello there, Kid. After we are met with the birth of Kid, we begin to see Black Star training at DWMA. And we begin to see Soul looking up at the sky. But not only this, we see a book. And this same book is what's telling us about exactly what transpired in Fire Force. And for the first time ever, we see Maka's mom revealed. I've been waiting for this moment for so, so long, bro. And it's just amazing. Spirit, Maka, and her mother were all reading about the story of Fire Force. And that is how they made a world that wouldn't fall to despair. And the manga finally ends. Thank you for reading. Please look forward to Okubo Sensei's next work. Next is Soul World. So it seems like Okubo might not be retiring just yet. He might have just been pulling our legs because now he's making a new series. I can tell you guys exactly how I feel about this ending and the entirety of Fire Force now that it's finally over, but I'm going to save that for another video. But please, in the comment section below, tell me what you guys think about this ending and what you think about Fire Force in its entirety. With all that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this chapter review, and I'll be making more Fire Force content for you to enjoy. I'll see you guys in the next video. Yeah, yeah, yeah.